Hello everyone, the worlds go crazy, but we're still here, like every Sunday, and so far so good, uh, nobody knows what's going to happen next week, but we're still here for the, for the meantime. So, let's talk about today's topic, which is a very interesting topic, uh, habit becomes second nature, and uh, it's really interesting, because we know that habits are like one of the most useful things that allow our body and our life to be efficient and uh, we know that uh, it takes around 21 days uh, in our world to acquire a habit and once we acquire this habit then it gets part of our consciousness part of our way of acting we don't need to think about it actually if we don't perform it we feel bad or like something is missing and it's really an efficient way. And then you can ask yourself, but why do we need habit? Why didn't nature just create us in a way that we would do everything automatically according, what, according to what is needed? Why do we need to study all the time like artificial stuff? If you remember yourself driving a car for the first time, uh, you probably don't remember yourself trying to eat with a fork and knife for the first time. But uh, it's so complicated. Things that come naturally to animals and the fact is that uh, if we would be created just like animals we would be like robots and uh, and uh, the fact that we are uh, we are required to participate consciously in many of the things we do in our life is part of the fact that we have a free choice uh, and it's funny because I've heard some some doctors say that uh, if we would uh, how do you pronounce it in English? If we would have needed to think consciously about breathing, many people would suffocate to death because they will forget about it, they'll get distracted, and etc., uh, etc. Cetera, et cetera. And they have other things to do, multitasking and whatever. So we, uh, so in many things, we still are just like animals. We don't need uh, uh, our own conscious interven intervention in order to survive or advance but in others we do and habits and habits come to help us with that and so they make our life very efficient so it can start from a schedule of a day it can it, it we, we see that a lot in the religious religion traditions that humans invent all kinds of actions uh, that keep them keep some kind of cultural uh, uh, environment around them and if they don't perform these actions then they feel bad and if they do, they feel good, etc., etc. So today we'll start and try to um, understand about habits in a more spiritual way. So I've pasted three links in the description box. And we have a lot to read, so we'll just start. Okay, so the first link is Cursory Thoughts on Shamati, What is the Habit Becomes a Second Nature in the Work. Okay, so there is a very good article what is the habit becomes a second nature in work uh, you can uh, google it later on it's from shamati because it's a higher language i won't do it in this lesson but it's a very good article so uh, light one says like this when we raise children we always try to accustom the child to take certain actions so that they w would become a habit such as to wash himself brush his teeth or clean the table after himself. We insist on these things day after day until a person can no longer do without them. He begins to feel uncomfortable. Eventually this habit frees him from effort, okay? So again, if you remember, you know, we've talked about in one of the previous talks about freedom and that freedom actually is in exertion, is in effort. Actually, a habit helps us to take out of the equation a parts uh, that require our, uh, our free intervention and it frees more resource for us to deal with other parts. My mother reminded me to brush my teeth so many times. I tried to get out of it but she would not let me. Now I'm bound to brushing my teeth even without my mother's reminder because I became used to it. This implies that we can create habits that will literally become innate and will not require any effort on our part to do them. On the contrary, it will be difficult not to do them because they have become part of our nature. All this comes from the actions that we constantly repeat until they become habits, okay? 
Okay, maybe we'll talk a bit about free choice a bit, because it is somehow uh, related here. And Okay, so think of it like this. Uh, we have an animal. So an, an animal is able to receive that, uh, must uh, act according to what brings it nature, and uh, avoid what brings it pain, and it's usually uh, programmed like this, okay? So it's programmed by nature to do good things. It, is, it doesn't need to learn about it, to, to, uh, to think about it. It just performs it out of instinct in most cases, okay? So if you think about us, you can say that we have uh, this part of us, which is like uh, we're acting like a beast. So just like we talked about breathing or, uh, I don't know what, uh, throwing the blanket uh, from the bed when it's too hot during our sleep, okay? And there is a huge part which we uh, relate to like free choice, okay? That we need to consciously intervene in, okay? And what we're talking about habits is that uh, instead of trying to deal with, let's say, this 80%, we're trying to focus efforts every time on a different slice. So we'll move this part from being a part of the free choice into part of the animal uh, thing, okay? Like brushing our teeth, okay? Or driving, or I don't know what. So we try to become, we're trying to move uh, a habit uh, into the form of, uh, if we're not performing that, if we're not performing it, it causes pain, and we do it for pleasure or just to be in balance, okay? And we're like trying to minimize the part of the free choice until we'll see exactly what is the precise point in reality in every moment that we need to consciously intervene in with all of our effort. And all the rest, it's like automatic. So actually what happens is that a person reveals that everything that he turned into a habit or everything he was born in with a beastly, in a beastly way, it's on the account of the Creator. If he would do it or not, it doesn't really matter because he's not a master of it, okay? So, let's continue. How does this law of habits becoming a second nature work? We receive a correcting force every time we make the effort to repeat an action so many times that it becomes imprinted upon us. This is the rule according to which habit becomes a second nature, okay? So we're like coming to the Creator, we're saying, hey, we want this to be automatic, and the Creator says, okay, uh, give enough effort to do that, we do it one time, three times, as we said, 21 days or whatever, it takes in corporality, and nature like imprints it in us, okay? This is why a person can become accustomed to anything. One can also attain feeling that he has never experienced before. And that's how we learn a new profession. So we go into something we haven't felt before. But by practicing in it again and again and again, we're creating these internal vessels that allows us, allow us to uh, feel and taste things in reality that we haven't seen before. In this way, he will become accustomed to the upper light that he has never felt before. Right now we are in an ocean of light, but who perceives it? So what do we lack? We need to become accustomed to it. We must always try to become sensitive to the light. Where is it? How does it operate? Do you feel it? Is it already here? It comes closer and closer. And I can almost feel that it is here. What do I need to do inside myself to start feeling it? Why do, what do I need to change? What do I need to do to become more sensitive to it? When a person tries to reveal the light in this way, he begins to ask questions. How can I feel it? I like the quality of bestowal, a little greater sensitivity, sensitivity toward what exists outside of me, and then I will perceive these vibrations until the light reveals itself, and not temporarily, but constantly. Everything materializes through habit. And this is why our work cons consists of acquiring habits. All the advice that Kabbalists give us are directed towards cost a costuming a cost to mind us, <laughs> that's how you pronounce it again, a cost mining, a cost mining, why cannot, why, why I cannot pronounce that, a cost you mining, a cost you mining, <laughs> this is funny, uh, I have these internal bugs which are amazing, I'm always surprising myself, 
so all the, uh, all the advice that Kabbalists give us are directed toward accustoming us to actions relative to our friends, dissemination and study. Why is that? Try to come out of your beast, start becoming mean accustomed to the fact that you exist outside of yourself. As soon as you really acquire this inclination, you will perceive the light. You will never reveal it within yourself, only outside, okay? So this is even I more interesting, okay? Because actually after we finish with all these uh, habits in our world that we acquire on our body, like brushing our teeth, driving, uh, I don't know what, uh, religion, tr religious tra traditions, etc., we have this part which we can call spiritual, meaning when a person tries to exit his ego, try to in somewhat be, become similar to the upper light, okay? And when a person starts to practice in that, in connecting to others, uh, to the Creator, to the, to the general uh, uh, force, to this general field, uh, when a person tries to do that, that's already a spiritual habit, okay? Uh, that he tries to, uh, through, through a repetitive uh, exertion and attempts, to build inside of himself uh, these patterns to sense what is outside of him. Good. Good, good. Uh, yeah. Okay, so, where was I? Yeah, I wanted to do another article. Uh, let's see if we have questions. No, we don't. On YouTube. No, we don't. Okay, so let's continue. Uh, here we go. Habit becomes second nature. There is a general law in nature which actually gives us hope for our coming closer to each other and in our ability to overcome our egos. This law states that one's habit becomes a second nature. We see this ourselves. Let's suppose from my childhood and over the course of my life, I become used to carrying out certain actions in order to reach a positive result or avoid undesirable consequences. Due to these actions that are repeated often, I develop a habit. It becomes the same kind of demand for me as the desire to receive pleasure, since I do not receive pleasure in any other form but this. Okay, we see that in many religions. religions. Uh, a person learns this and these actions become a habit for him. Everything depends only on how the environment obliges him to do something, how many people act in that manner, and to what extent it has support from everything that surrounds him in life. Therefore, if we create an education system and organize an environment that will offer support to every person, one will be influenced by the mere fact that other people care so much about everyone else. He will find out about it from the media, from the positive public opinion it forms. In addition, everyone will know that we do this on purpose. We play with each other and pretend to be kind, as though we think that we all are one family, like we care about each other as we do about ourselves. We will need to play this game constantly. We will act like we already are corrected. And what will this do for us? Okay? So, again, an important uh, fact or an important factor in a uh, a spiritual habit is that actually we're playing or everybody else is also playing and we create this environment that sustains each, other, each and every one of us and gives them motivation to play in this new habit, like we love one another. But it's important to know that it's like or as if. It's not the real state. Because this small uh, difference is what... Uh, Allows us, uh, allow, allows us, yes, to, to raise a prayer, okay, to um, give all these attempts and exertion in the end to the Creator and say, hey, we cannot do it ourselves, we tried our best, help us, okay? Otherwise, we just think that we, or we, um, 
we let ourselves uh, be misguided by this illusion that we are already corrected or connected or love one another. Gradually, due to this habit, I'm oh, sorry. Gradually, due to this habit, public opinion and, and the influence of the environment, I will begin to think in this direction and receive an impression from this behavior. I will begin to form a habit, and I will not be able to act in any other way anymore. It will become a nature, as though I was born this way, in spite of the fact that I acquired this quality, that I was forced to develop it, and that I agreed due to lack of any other choice. Therefore, we need to realize the law, a habit will become second nature. Everything depends on how much a person is situated under his own pressure and the pressure of his environment in order not to forget about this game and to advance in this matter, and we will play this way like little children. Okay? And well, it goes on, but I guess that's the main thing. So, you see how a habit is an important thing for us, okay? In the end, it's all about requiring habits, because in requiring a habit, I'm actually playing as if I'm in the next degree. So, we're playing like we're in the next degree, and by uh, constantly doing so, and um, how do you translate Atmada? I don't have a clue. Let me check this. Yeah, persistence, I knew that. I would probably say resistance, but... Uh, persistence. So, through persistence, we actually allow the upper light to work on us and change us. And uh, so, uh, that's an important part. Uh, okay, we have a question, I guess. No, it's not a question. It's more like a long uh, statement. Okay, uh, so no questions about this. So let's do another one. Why is it so hard to kick a habit? Actually, it isn't hard. Take smoking, for example. If every, if every time I took a cigarette to my mouth, I were to get an electric shock, a few attempts would be enough for me to quit smoking, and I would never start smoking again. Even if I knew that the punishment was cancelled, it is because now I don't identify cigarettes with pleasure, but with an electric shock. This association is already recorded in the desire, and so from now on cigarettes don't exist for me. I am afraid of them. Okay, so uh, this is another important part of acquiring habits, that actually the help that we get from the upper light is help in a, what we call a recognition of evil, okay? Understanding that our ego is actually bad for us. And that's not an easy thing to do. So think of a child that uh, likes to eat chocolate all the time, or things with a lot of sugar, and it feels good, but this child goes bigger and bigger, okay? It starts to have many problems, but he cannot stop the, shop, the sugar because the sugar on the long and the short term it's very tasteful. So how can you bring to his uh, recognition? It's not even his recognition. It's like his uh, deepest understanding. It's like in the senses, like he tastes it. So how can you bring it to the level of taste? Uh, the consequences from the future. So actually, that's what we try to do with edu education. All our education is about, hey, you know, I'm bigger and smarter than you, I experience more in life, and I'm telling you that it's better for you to act now like this, and not like that, because in the future you'll be better off, because the child might want this. So we need such a strong educational system, and this is what uh, Rav Lightman referred to in, in an environment, the media and the friends and everybody that will make this child feel that the moment he puts sugar in his mouth he immediately gets uh, the bad state already, he feels it. He, he immediately experiences it. And um, that's a challenge. 
how to do that. In the end, it's the upper light that does it. Um, yeah. Questions? No question here. No question here. Okay, so if we have no questions in here and we have 10 more minutes, uh, let's do the main article. It's true that I've said that uh, <laughs> I've said that I won't do it, but you know, I changed my mind like, uh, like every good politician. Uh, habit becomes second nature in work. Ashlag. Okay, so we're gonna do shamadi. So this is an article from 1943. What is the habit becomes second nature in the work? Problems. Problem with this site that it, it is built in a way that I always hide it. Oh. I hope that now you can see it better. And again, psh, this is annoying. Okay, this is pretty annoying. And let's try it like this. No, it doesn't work like this. Okay, hopefully this is better. Through a costume, a costuming again this word. Through a costuming oneself to something, that thing becomes na second nature for that person. Hence, there is nothing that one cannot feel its reality. This means that although one has no sensation of the thing, he still comes to feel it by a costuming to that thing. Okay, this is very important. So there is nothing in reality, and here Barasulam refers to the Creator, that the person cannot come uh, to be able to sense and feel if he builds the right uh, habit towards it. We must know that there is a difference between the Creator and the creatures regarding sensations. For the creatures there is the, fi the feeler and the felt, the attaining and the attained. This means that we have a feeler who is connected to some reality. However, a reality without a feeler is only the Creator Himself. In Him there is no thought and perception whatsoever. This is not so with the person. His whole, whole existence is only through the sensation of reality. Even the, valid, the validity of reality is evaluated as valid only re with regard to the one who senses the reality. Okay, we see that a lot with the, all kinds of illusions. In other words, what the filler tastes is what he considers truth. If one tastes a bitter taste in reality, meaning he feels bad in the situation he is in and suffers because of that state, that person is considered wicked in the work. This is because he condemns the Creator, since he is called benevolent, because he only bestows goodness to the world. Yet re with respect to that person's sensation, the person feels that he has received the opposite from the Creator, meaning the situation he is in is bad. Okay, so if one experiences uh, bad things in reality, if he suffers, he condemns, he uh, is considered wicked in the work because he curses the Creator internally. He curses the reality. We should therefore understand what our sages wrote. The world was not created but either for complete wicked or for complete righteous. It means the following, either one tastes and feels a good taste in the world and then one justifies the Creator and says that God, that God gives only goodness to the world, or if one feels and tastes a bitter taste in the world, then one is wicked. This is be so because he, one condemns the Creator. It turns out that everything is measured according to one sensation. However, all these sensations have no relation to the Creator, as it says in the poem of unification, as she, so you, you will always be shortage and sur surplus in you will not be. 
Hence all the walls and all the changes are only with respect to the receivers as one attains them. Okay, so uh, the creator doesn't change, nothing changes in the creator, only in the way that we perceive him, uh, that, that we perceive him, that we uh, uh, that we we attain him, and uh, it's a big question: How do we attain him? How do we perceive him? And what Kabbalists say is that we can change our perception; we can come to feel him differently by creating the right habit. Okay, and creating the the right habit is determining what is good and what is bad. And by determining that everything for ourselves is bad, because it cuts us off from the Creator, and determining that everything that we bestow or sense outside of ourselves is good, because in that we are in adhesion of form with the Creator, by that we are capable, and of course by persistence and uh, repetitive uh, exertion, we can come to a state in which we uh, 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 reveal the Creator and uh, and leave it. Okay, so it's like just like breathing. Think of it if breathing uh, if breathing was a ha was a habit. Maybe I don't know. Let's take uh, if you know methods like buteiko or certain forms of meditation that they tell you how to breathe. So consciously with time. With a repetitive uh, process, you start to breathe differently, uh, not from your mouth, only from your nose, or or or, or inhaling from the nose, exhaling from the mouth, doesn't really matter. Uh, and then you start to, it starts to become a habit, that's how you live by. Uh, so in the same way, it's like not receiving anything for yourself, only outside of yourself, nothing for myself, only outside lowering my ego, feeling more of the others, and this is like their spiritual breath. And by doing that, a person reveals that actually he doesn't have an individual breath. But when he does so, he is breathing with all of reality. And the force of life, or what they're breathing, is what is called the Creator. Okay, I guess that's it about habits. You don't have more questions, so we'll conclude three minutes earlier. It's not so bad. Uh, take care, be healthy, and hopefully see you next time. Bye-bye.